Dear students, today we will be learning about constrictions in the pathway of the ureter and the blood supply of the ureter. Before starting our topic today, we need to be orient ourselves with this model. So what we can see here, you are looking at the left kidney and you are looking at the right kidney. Then you are looking at the transversus abdominis muscle, the quadratus lumborum muscle and sos major muscle. And then you can see in the midline abdominal aorta inferior vena cava. And then you can see from the hilum of the kidney the most posterior structure which is descending downwards and approaching towards the urinary bladder. This tubular structure is the ureter. So you are looking at the left ureter and there you are looking at the right ureter. So now after seeing that we can see that these are the ureters and they are crossed in the middle by these gonadal vessels. We have discussed already how these gonadal vessels are different especially the gonadal vein on the left side and right side. So I will not be talking about that. So now my first task is to talk about the constrictions, the narrow points which are present in the pathway of a normal ureter. The first constriction point it commences where it begins and that is where the pelvis becomes a ureter. That is called pelvi ureteric junction or PUJ or UPJ. This is the first constriction and it is there on both the sides. In simple words we can see where ureter begins. This is the first constriction site. The second constriction site when this ureter goes all the way you are looking at this is the abdominal part of the ureter. When it is approaching towards the pelvis you can see that these are my common iliac and the place where it crosses the common iliac this is one reference point on both the sides. Another name can be given to the same area we also call it pelvic brim. So at this point you can see that ureter is not going straight it is bending. So this bending because due to this bending this act as the second constriction of the ureter. And then you can see that its pelvic part where ureter runs in the pelvic cavity it goes all the way it enters into the wall of the urinary bladder. The moment it enters in the wall of the urinary bladder the third part of the ureter is there and that third part is called intravesical or intramural part of the bladder. So that act as the third constriction part which is also called as vesico ureteric junction and that will act as the third narrow site. So now what is the significance? What happens because of these sites and why we are talking about them? The reason is these narrow sites are becoming more evident when let's say a calculus which is formed in the kidney, any part of the kidney and it starts its descent. It might got stuck at the first part. The first part is pelvi ureteric junction. So this is a place where a stone can stuck. The second constriction point is where, where it, when the ureter crosses the pelvic brain. So if stone, this is a narrow side, so stone might stuck here. And the third part where ureter is connected to the urinary bladder. So vesico ureteric junction. So these constriction sites are the places, potential places where a stone can get lodged. Guys, when you learn about the constrictions, there are some other sites as well, but these three are must know because our ure ureters, they encounter three at three location with some vessels as well and that will be covering in another slide and you can see one of them for example you can see that this ureter is crossed by these gonadal vessels. In the pelvic region in the female the ureter is crossed by the uterine artery. So those are also having some significance but when, when you are asked about the constriction sites so the normal constriction sites are number one and this number one is pelvic ureteric junction. Number two is pelvic brim and number three is vesico ureteric junction. 
Okay, so let's talk about the blood supply of the ureter. Before starting, let's recap. The ureter starts from the hilum of the kidney. This is the most posteriorly located structure at the hilum of the kidney. We talk about its constrictions. But now I'll be talking about the ureter has a long course in the posterior abdominal wall. And there you can see it is present, it is lying in front of this source major muscle. And it travels all the way down till it reaches to the common iliac vessels where they bifurcate. So this part of the ureter is given another name for the, for the understanding and we call this ureter as the abdominal part of the ureter. And you can see on the left side and you can also see on the right side. So this is the abdominal part of the ureter. Then you can see the ureter after crossing this common ilex is entering into the pelvic cavity. So this is the pelvic part of the ureter. And then it has a journey within the wall of the urinary bladder that is the intravesical part. Now let's take one by one the arterial supply. So let's take the arterial supply of the abdominal part of the ureter. So the upper part of my abdominal ureter that gets its blood supply number one from this renal artery. After that, it gets a branch from this gonadal artery. Then it gets a branch directly from the aorta. And after that, when it reaches near to the common iliac, it gets a direct branch from the common iliac artery. We have talked about the abdominal ureter. And now we are looking at closely where the ureter is given the name of the pelvic ureter. So now this pelvic ureter it gets its supply from the internal iliac. It gets its blood supply from the superior and inferior vesicle arteries. It gets its blood supply from the middle rectal artery. And if it's a female, then it gets its blood supply from the uterine and vaginal arteries. I cannot show you all these branches on this model because these are very tiny. Ureter has a long course and each part of the ureter is enriched with different arteries which are, in, which are present in the neighboring area and they make a longitudinal plexus. It looks like there's a rich supply for the ureter, but during surgical maneuvers, cautions has to be taken with minimal movements of the ureter because it's, it, this organ is very liable to go under ischemia. Thanks for watching this video.